everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Andrea and in today's video I'd like to share with you my intended to be read pile for the month of November. Now if you don't know what non-fiction November is, on YouTube, in the reading and bookish community, we have challenges that we give ourselves for things to read for certain readathons. Nonfiction November is hosted by Olive from the channel of Book Olive. She's one of my friends. I love her very much. And every year she puts out the coolest challenges. One year I got to host alongside her and it was so much fun, but I also understood how much work goes into organizing something like this and maintaining it, which is why Olive is stepping down after this year and no longer hosting it. So. I don't know if I'm going to be participating in it anymore afterwards or how I'm going to do it challenges in general. Now I always really like answering questions like what would you read for this and throughout the month I tend to go off script anyway sometimes but you know it's, it's always fun to try at least. But the only real challenge is for you to read one nonfiction book. So you can choose any nonfiction book, read it, and you can say you've participated. But just to have more fun, uh, Olive always provides four words and they're pretty vague so that you can adapt it the way you want to to make it fit the description. So the four words for this year are code, path, shot and join. First challenge is code and I've seen a lot of people read about computers or genetic codes and it's it's really interesting how many books can be adapted for this but my brain immediately went to one place and one place only. There be but one code for me. For this challenge I'll be reading The Pirate Code by Rebecca Simon. I've read one of her books before about Captain Kidd and his capturing and she was also a very cool introduction to the world of pirate history. I loved that book very much and it opened a whole new reading challenge for me in general. And I know she's also written a book recently about pirate queens, specifically Anne Bonny and Mary Read. I've been meaning to take a deep dive into a book that focuses entirely on the pirate code because I think it teaches a lot about guidelines for pirates at the time. Uh, this is mainly associated usually with Bartholomew Roberts or Black Bart as he's known and eventually I'm going to do a spotlight on that pirate but I thought why not focus on the code first so that's what I will be reading for this challenge. Now the second challenge is path and I guess in a weird way it goes hand in hand with my interests on islands and pirates and things that are obscure and odd. So my adaptation of this word, path, will be to go off of it and go off the map. And this is a non-fiction work, I don't know if you can see it properly, but um, it's written by Alistair Bonnet. From forgotten enclaves to floating islands, from hidden villages to, to New York gutter spaces, off the map charts the hidden corners of our planet. While these are not necessarily places you would choose to visit on a holiday, like Hobyo, the pirate capital of Somalia, or a word that I cannot even pronounce, which is a secret military town in Russia. They each carry a story about the strangeness of a place, a concept which continues to enthrall us in a world that is not quite as exhaustively mapped as it can sometimes appear to be. I mean, to me, this is just so fascinating. Like, you know, I've mentioned a few times on this channel that I love the TV show Lost, and one of the things I loved about it was just this concept. There's this like m island that's completely uncharted and off the maps and no one's heard about it. Um, so this is gonna be so much fun. Now this book came out in 2014, which is a decade ago. And I do wonder how much has changed since, how many of these things have been charted, if this book has also highlighted some things by being written, you know what I mean? So it'll be fun to read and also kind of keep that historical perspective in mind. Now shot was the only challenge that gave me a bit of pause because I didn't really want to read about vaccines or alcohol. I just, it doesn't interest me right now. And I thought I'm just gonna play with this one as I'm gonna give this a shot because I really want to carry on reading a book that I've already started and it's a bit chonky so I think it's gonna take me um, a bit of November to finish this and I'm just gonna put this as a stand-in here because I don't have anything else for it and it's 
a born-to-be-posthumous, the eccentric life and mysterious genius of Edward Gorey. This is a book written by Mark Derry. I am truly enjoying this. I am getting out of Gorey's life a bit more of what I was hoping to get out of Charles Adams' life um, because he's actually kind of weird in, in a very exciting and cool way. And the reason the title is Born to be Posthumous is because in the year 2000, when Gory died, people were kind of like, wait, I thought he was already dead. Well, I thought he was Victorian. I thought he was British. And in the year 2000, only one of those statements was true. And that is actually the line of how this book starts. So the author also has a bit of like morbid humor in it. So I, I like it very much so far, but I'll continue this. And I'm sorry, but I have to adapt to giving this a shot for this challenge. The last challenge is join. And this is obviously like joining together, community, a group of some kind. And for this, I'm gonna read this book, which I've been meaning to read for such a long time. I've had this since, I bought it in hardcover a long, long time ago. And it's called At the Existentialist Cafe, Freedom, Being, and Apricot Cocktails. And it's by Sarah Bakewell. And this is a nonfiction work about a specific time in the history of Paris or continental philosophy where you had Simone de Beauvoir, Jean-Paul Sartre, and Albert Camus, and a larger circle of philosophers hanging out and discussing things together. And I've always wished and prayed that I could be a fly on the wall to just witness the conversations. And I think that's what this book is trying to capture, that historical time period, um, that space and the vibes of being in this existentialist or philosopher group. But this is what I intend to read in November. I'm still finishing up a bunch of things that I started in October. I shared a very chaotic video uh, two weeks ago where I was in the middle of a bunch of things and I have been finishing those up. So we're gonna get to the end of that as well. So thank you very much for watching. Please share with me in the comments if you've got some time what you are reading for these challenges, if you're doing them at all. And if you are not participating, what would you answer if you, if you could? or if you wanted to participate at all, what would be your answers? I'm really curious because I always get introduced to new books that way. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in a future video. Bye.